M0FXB. There's a new DMR radio soon to be released. It's the RT6D. If you're familiar with the RT4D, this is basically a colour version of it. Now the RT4D is fantastic because it doesn't cost much. It's about £35, but it has DMR, dual, it's dual band, air band, and it you know there's a learning process to any DMR radio. On the RT4D Facebook group, uh, sorry, 60 here by Alec, uh, there's some video by Andre, yeah, uh, and you're seeing it on the right hand side of the actual radio in operation. And it's lovely, isn't it? It's, you know, dual screen, very similar to the Radtel 880 and the UV98. But this is DMR. It's not, as far as I'm seeing, it's not triple display. But I know that future models, they're planning Bluetooth GPS, but the first one always comes out, um, you know, without it. So they, there it is in action. So I thought we'd have a little play with the software. Let's have a look. So it's very familiar to the RT40 and the 880. Just with DMR, you have the extra selections for zones and contacts and receive groups. Okay you don't get with normal VHF, UHF, UHF. Now don't forget, you're not going to buy this radio and find it easy to program. It's, there's no way it's going to work that way. DMR, there is no easy. There's no buy a radio, click, 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 and suddenly I'm easily programming it. There's buy a radio and open up a whole lot of learning. So let's put my hotspot in there. So here we are, we're going to go across here. We've got device, power on, config, con config 2, like a settings really, the different keys, you know, the buttons, what you can program them to do different things. You can actually program long key every button on there. Look at all these things you can do. Uh, scanning. Now, I, know, I don't know what the scanning capabilities are going to be. Of course, I'll be testing it soon, but not for a few more weeks. But you can see that you can set the side buttons and the front buttons front buttons long key so let's just get a channel in there so we're going to go to channel number one uh four three one dot five five zero that's my hotspot digital so you can choose digital and analog and we're going to call it hotspot channel alias basically means name like so and if you click more i'm going to double click it it really it's about these ones down here so receive group list at the moment is just defaulting as none. Contacts. I'll leave that there for now. You have to create contacts. Color code one, DMR slot two I'll use. I'll leave that as dual slot off for now. Now go across to contacts. Now here, you're not going to speak to anyone unless you've got a contact, which is basically a talk group number that it transmits on. So if we do the first one at number two, we'll call it group call. The name actually isn't what's important. It's the number. And we're going to put in 91. Okay, 91. Then we'll do another one, group call. And say this one could be Hubnet, which, is, which does have a DMR connection. And we're going to put in that one is two, three, five, two, six. Another good one is nine because Nine is like an invisible wire to your repeater or your hotspot, but it doesn't actually connect you to, to talk group nine. It's just a way of controlling your hotspot. They, they, we call it local and it's nine. Okay. A few talk groups. Now, if we do another channel analog, uh, let's just close this down a minute. Actually, no, we didn't finish doing the first one, did we? Let me go back to that. All right, so now if we go back to our channel, we can now select, it says here, contacts. And we can go, we can choose, let's choose worldwide. That's 91. So when we transmit on my hotspot, it's going to go into to 91. Okay. Uh, da, 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 da. Now, dual slot. Mm, I'll test that when I've got it. So now let's add an analog channel. So we're going to go uh, 145.600. That's GB3WR. We need to change the 6 to a 0. That gives us the input. We need to select analog. When you get analog is when you can start selecting tone. So if you look down at the bottom, the transmit tone is 
that CTCSS tone, 94.8, and give it a name. It's that easy. But you do, if you want to find these, because it's a DMR radio, you do have to create zones. So at the, at the moment here, let's call the top zone, we'll call that digital, the DMR. And the next zone down, we're going to call it analog. So non-DMR. So now we need to decide what's, what channels are in that digital one. So we've only created one, so we're going to click add. We've now got a hotspot in that's digital. If we go to the analog zone, you'll see that there's nothing in there. We're going to put in GB3WR. You see how it works? Every channel you've got is in the middle, but you're deciding where you want those channels, you know, which zone you want it to be. So let's do one here. Let's call this one air. Now, I don't even know if this radio does air. So at the moment, there's no zones in air. So we'll go back to channel. We'll put in an air band frequency, 133.850. It's gone in there. It's analog. Um, I don't know if it's selected air AM, but I, I think it would, because I feel like um, that will automatically select. So no need to do TTCSS and things like that, but it has gone in. So, okay. So now if we keep going to the zones, go to air, we can now add that air channel in. So now we've got these, we're starting to populate our zones. And remember, you can put in like, I don't know, is it 100 channels in each zone? Um, and you can rename the zone so you can find them on the radio. So there's your contacts. Of course, you can add hundreds of contacts, which is basically talk groups. One like disconnect would be would be like a I think you'd go in as an individual, but say it's your friend and you'd call it, say, disconnect, but your friend may have a call sign. That's more of a private one. Yeah. Right. So one to one chat. We can put that one as, say, 4000, which I think would work for disconnection. That's just an example. Yeah. Um, OK. And it does say you can import and export here, which, I, you know, we're going to try that. Uh, I wonder if you can with channels. Right, anyway, go over to FM radio now. This is, look at this, this is all your broadcast radio stuff. Now, on the HF models, the RT880, the UV98, this has been changed to control the uh, the HF radio bands, the ham radio bands, you know. Uh, so I think that's brilliant, the way they've done that. It would have took a lot of work to do that. DTMF, they're always going to work quite well. It says message here and time. Let's go back to device. You are going to need your DMR number. So I would say where it says radio name, you could probably put in M0FXP. Um, but here, you, I would say you need to put in your DMR number, 2341437. And yes, you need a ham radio license and you have to register your DMR number. And you can see the frequency range is saying up to 1000 megs there, which is pretty good. Power on, you can import an image here. Could try it. Well, I haven't got one, but let's just go down to my images and I'll just select one just for the fun of it. R2D2 here. Let it's gone in there, so maybe we could send that to the radio. And all you do is just go right, but we haven't got the radio. <laughs> More settings here. So you've got LCD brightness, screen timer, backlight on or off, all the beeps, frequency steps. Display is dual or single, so you can do single display and displaying the frequency, which is the actual numbers of the frequency, or the channel name and even zone name. It's got zone mode and so on and so on. So, yeah, looking forward to tinkering. Analog settings here. I don't think there's much there that I would actually change, to be honest. The buttons, the channels, contacts. So you can obviously save this and then bring it back in. It saves it as a DMF for for our DMF file. That's basically your uh, Radtel RT4D, which is a very good set. But again, hard to program or there's no thing like, oh, is this DMR radio easy to program? There's no such thing as a as a easy DMR radio to program. It does not exist. Um, and there you go. So read and write to radio, port select when you first connect, of course, select your port just by right clicking on your device manager and then finding your port number. Just the usual on that. So I think that's enough for now.
Um, and once it's here, we'll be making lots of videos. I think it's going to be a very nice looking DMR radio, one of the best ones for the price. Probably under a hundred pound, you get this full color screen. The image isn't amazing that you're seeing here, but you can see in real, you know, without the glare, that's going to be a very nice looking DMR radio and it'll sit nicely next to your, um, next to your Radtail 880. So thank you. And um, yeah, lots of fun learning these radios. Bye for now.